why is he doubling down on opting out? <laughs> why, why? Why? I don't know why. He, because I mean, I'm not it, saying that he shouldn't do it down the road. But what is the benefit of saying that now? You mean right now? Right like, now? Like, like obviously, that. right now. That's a good now, question. Which I, he did I, I, I would, over the weekend. If you were going to say that question over, say, a year, I get it because right he, now he's 33 years old, right? And he's gonna, you know, he's getting to the point where he's got to opt out so he can get his one more big contract. It makes sense. But mm. why say that right now? Why like reiterate that right now after you're uh, put on the shelf for at least four weeks? Likely not going to get a start till June or so? Mm. I don't know. Just to rub it in our faces? No, maybe? absolutely not. <laughs> I'm he's, just, such I'm a, joking. he's one of the great guys. I'm joking, yeah, you know. I know you are. But I listen, I, and, and it doesn't really matter what you say. It's what you do at mm -hmm. the end of the day. Yes. But I'm looking at this timeline here. Shut down for four weeks. So he's not going to touch a ball until May 1. Yes. And then after the reevaluation, if that's favorable, then it's go time. And if it's not, I mean, who knows? But yes. I guess we'll get to the choice B if we ever get there in terms of if it's not favorable. I, I think what's 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 like what conf what confounds me about the Grom's future yeah. with the Mets. Not that he's not going to be a Met, but Take, I'm going to take you through three possible scenarios here. So let's say the first, the first, the first thing occurs, and it's mid June. There's no interruptions, and he pitch, he pitches the rest of the way, and pitches like Degrom. Yes. Then you obviously opt out, and you do what you got to do. Of course. If it's mid June, and again, it's not going to be before mid June, no matter what. You got to you got to lengthen the arm out. That's if the evaluation is even favorable. If, if it's mid June. Uh, and there's multiple interruptions or a singular lengthy interruption again. I don't know how you opt out and get the big money. Uh, and worst case, and nobody wants to see this, he's not back until who knows. Yeah. So if they go to look at this, you know, in a month from now, when it's still swollen, he can't resume his throwing regimen, then you know, you have no idea what's going to happen. But I don't know how a guy who, whose career right now, at least his season, like, not his, his season, yeah. is very much in peril. Uh, and he's got thirty-two and a half million dollars on the books in twenty twenty-three, which is good money. He deserves more if he's healthy, but it's good money. And in twenty twenty-four at thirty-two five, so you're talking sixty-five million dollars guaranteed for two years. If he doesn't pitch a lot this year, how do the Mets justify yeah, well, giving him all that money? Well, because he's still great. I mean, at the end of the day, but you're not great if you're not healthy. I understand that, but to me, so to answer your question, you know, without being facetious about it, is it? To me, this is actually telling me something positive about Jacob deGrom's mentality towards what it's – it's a concerning issue. Uh, the sh stress reaction in the scapula, which, I, I mean, I guess I can kind of figure out what that means, but it doesn't really matter. Um, he has a, an injury that's going to put him on the shelf for four weeks. Then they're going to reevaluate, and then he's going to start trying to get back into – you know, his regular routine, but he's got to start it all over, as we all know, and he's got to get lengthened out. That's why BT saying maybe mid-June is when he's, you know, full go. But to me, by doubling down that he is still going to opt out, in his mind, he's saying, I'm good. I'm just having a little bit of a setback. I'm going to have a great season as soon as I get as soon as I get healthy. And you're already starting to hear, you know, Buck Showalter and others spin this a little bit. Uh, yeah, it sucks what we're missing him at the beginning of the season, but just think how great this is going to be as a midseason addition. Uh, provided that he comes back midseason. What else is Buck going to say? Uh, that, you yeah, have to spin it I mean, favorably. It's, exactly. it's, it's all you can you got say. got 24 other guys to and worry about. And it's all, be honest, it's all DeGrom can say right now. And it's all, it's all meaningless until that's he's right. on the mound. That's right. Or until, you know, unfortunately, God forbid, if he's not, you know, for for a big, big, bigger chunk of the season than we anticipate, it doesn't matter what Buck says. It doesn't matter what we say. No. It really doesn't. It's, you know, it matters it's, what DeGrom does when he actually gets healthy and on the mound. There yeah. you go. That that really is the answer. And I'll tell you what, it's amazing. Here we are, opening week. We'll be uh, the, the weather looks horrendous on Thursday, which stinks. I know it. We're supposed to be out there, and uh, obviously we'll follow that, and, and hopefully we still will. Uh, if they cancel, I would imagine we'll be out there on Friday, but uh, that's a little later in the week in terms of Yankees-Red Sox. Think about the energy. Think about the energy and how it shifted within the fan bases. Within within a couple of days. Yeah. Think about this. We all know the Mets fan, and rightfully so. They were pumped up, big offseason, acquisitions. Now you got Scherzer, best staff in baseball, great manager, Cohen with the big checkbook, let's roll. And then very quietly, the Phillies made some moves. All right, well, we're, we're still good. We still have a lot. And they do at that point. And we're, 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 it's going to be good. Good division. We're ready to go. Then the injuries start trickling in. 
the Grom out for a while. Scherzer's hamstring is barking. Now you have this trade, which thank God the Mets didn't make that trade. I saw the 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 the, the bullet points, and I'm like, why would the Mets make this trade with the? I didn't like it from from yeah, jump. Why do you want Hosmer as a salary? Dump? Even though, <laughs> even if the Padres were going to eat the thirty million dollars of, of his mean. remaining four years, which apparently they were going to do. Paddock is, he doesn't do it for me. I, I thought it was a little bit of, of an overreaction, potentially, by the Mets. But the Mets fan went from euphoric in terms of the offseason to rightfully downtrodden, not not beaten. I'm not trying to imply that because you guys are resilient because you're Mets fans. You have to be. And then you look at it in contrast to the Yankee fan. Mm-hmm. All we did all winter was chirp and complain and whine and take umbrage with, oh, Cashman again. Uh, a poorly constructed team. What are you doing? Why didn't you get this guy? Why did you know, why do you have to get that guy? And then all of a sudden you watch the Yankees during the spring. Donaldson's mashing bombs, Judge is mashing bombs, Sagashioka is hitting bombs, <laughs> IKF is playing solid. Like there is a palpable difference of shift and and emotion uh, going into the season for these teams. It's brass, it's ta- it's brass tax, BT. It comes down to what happens when, right when you have to step up to the plate and and then and swing the back. So at the end, of, it's swing the bat at the end of the day. And right now, the Yankees look good in spring training. Now, obviously, there's still the cold question. Not that there's a concern. There's a cold question. Um, you know, uh, Severino, he, even though he looks like this little setback, this overall stiffness thing was really <laughs> nothing. Uh, we you know, needed to see that. Set. Saturday. No, absolutely. That was good to see. Exactly. So you, yeah, you're right. All of a sudden, as a Yankee fan, you're feeling pretty confident heading into the season because you're going to score runs. I mean, you're scoring six or seven runs every night if the guys are on, right? Uh, whereas the Mets, now you feel concern, and I think it's less so because of Max Scherzer. Now, Max Scherzer has a hamstring injury, BT, and I, I don't know what that is. Totally, we haven't heard, um, you know, any you know, intimate details of what the hamstring is- issue is. It's not like they're scratching him already. Not yet. And so it seems like he's going to get, you know, the opening day start. And by the way, that's why you bring him here, right? That's why you, that's why if you're Steve Cohen uh, and you're this Mets organization, you bring in a Max Scherzer because you know that Jacob DeGrom has had these issues. So if he goes down at any point, and unfortunately it's at the beginning of the season, you still have an ace. And then you get Bassett, who's a pretty damn good pitcher. So you still have one and two that are pretty, you know, still pretty good. Now mm-hmm. the, the the back three are a little bit different, um, you know, a little bit. Yeah, you know, questionable. We don't know. We don't know, right? With Walker and Carrasco and uh, maybe McGill, I think is, is mm-hmm, who they're talking mm-hmm. about. Absolutely. And so uh, it, like, he might yeah, pitch opening day, McGill. He, he might. And if he does, you know, good for him. In a short sample, he was good. But then last year he had a hundred and what thirty something innings, and it just he hadn't been. He'd never pitched that many innings mm-hmm. in, his, in his career. He pitched thirty five was his max, and he goes to one hundred and thirty. What do you think is going to happen? You know, he started out great, had a good July, and then all of a sudden he got he got destroyed. So. You got to trust that he's evolved into a a, a potential full time starter. But the Mets, I think they're okay because of what they did. Not not in, not not because of the Degrom injury and the negativity. You go get Scherzer and Bassett because you know that Degrom is going to have some sort of issue at some point. At least that's how. If I'm a Mets fan, that's how I'm spinning it positively. Okay, okay. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. Tiki and Tierney show here on the fan. So. It is opening week. A little later in the show, we'll give out Yankee tickets, chance to win them. Uh, we'll do a little Coach K. Oh, Coach K. Mm. I mean, y'all you know, listen. Dude. I, I Honestly, if I'm Coach K, I, I don't want to get into this deep. I, I would rather not have made the tournament than lose to Carolina. Again. Carolina beat him. For, that was his first loss at Duke. They, they wanted Cameron, his final game there, and they knock you out of the final four. No matter what happens the next 20 years, that's and stain is the wrong word. Yeah, but that that feeling. Well, Carolina owns that's Duke. Right. Well, it's at the end of the day, and we'll get to this later. BT owns them. It's not going to be. It's not going to be. Oh, I don't remember his last loss. Exactly. <laughs> like, you're yeah. gonna remember it wasn't like his some last obscure <laughs> second round. Oh, uh, the team just wasn't any good anymore. No, you lost to Carolina in one of the greatest games of all time. That was wild. It's also a Masters week. And they're going to get a game time decision for Ty. I think he's playing. I've been saying that for two months now. He's trying. It is amazing that he's even got a chance to step on that tee box. But, you know, listen, here's the thing, too. Uh, back to the Mets and, and obviously the incorporating the Yankees here. Just the energy of the first week of the season, expectations, et cetera. The thing about the DeGrom injury, you're right. Scherzer are obviously, sl- if he's right, if he's healthy, mm-hmm. slots back up. Um, and it, 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 it somewhat offsets the absence of DeGrom for a little bit. But the Met bats, while they're good, 
They're good. They're not so potent where they're going to show up every night yeah. and just blast people offensively. So the Met pitching's got to be on point. And we haven't even gotten to their bullpen yet, which could be which could be an issue this year. Conversely, the Yankees before, you know, really, well, I got to see where Cole is, and yeah. that's a big story as well. But the Yankees, so the Mets were viewed as a team, their pitching will carry them, and the offense will will supplement whatever they can accomplish. I think from the Yankees' point of view, you know, it was always, well, they're going to have to mash their way to whatever they mash their way to. Now, that has not changed. Like, that's still going to be the recipe for them to achieve whatever they achieved this year. That's the Yankees. But the Mets' recipe has changed. Yes. yes. It's changed. And that's, and, and that's maybe why you're starting to see, or at least hear, about some potential deals trying to get done in this last week, BT, because... Well, Madai is gone. You ain't getting him. That's right. Yanks, and by the way, the Yanks aren't getting him. I know. I know. We both both of the teams we they, we talked about that guy coming. He obviously ends up in the Padres of all places. Man, they are just uh, they are looking to wheel and deal out there. In well, San I mean, Diego. if you're if you're San Diego, you have to get to compete in the division, and that's what the, the obviously the goal is this season is to compete in the division. You got to make every move you possibly can, and that's what they're doing. All right, so we'll get to these calls here. It's 1013 on the fan. We're inside of our Town Fair Tire studio. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. Our boy Hoffman is back. A round of applause for Hoff. We miss you. Connor did a good job, but he ain't half. How you feeling there, buddy? You good? I'm hanging in there. I'm doing good. I'm yeah. happy to be back. Trust well, me. We're happy to have you back. What is your uh, what is your emotional assessment of your Mets right now based on what's transpired? Uh, can I tell you? Yeah. I was furious on Friday. Not the news over Jacob DeGrom. Not the news over Max Scherzer. But the reaction from the crybaby Mets fans already. Mm. I'm sorry, guys. It's a different freaking team. Get over it. This Logan. is not the Will Ponds. This is Steve Cohen. I'm comfortable with this team. I'm confident with this team. They made so many moves in the offseason. We're going to be fine. Jacob DeGrom can come back in freaking August. We need him <laughs> in September and October. This is a completely different team. I'm sorry. Let's not go over the top I here, Ralph. I, I know you've been locked up at home for five days. <laughs> what what, what gives you that idea? What do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> this guy, he's hopping off the walls. He was around his family for five straight days. Now he's got these crazy opinions. Yeah, it's not that wild. It's not. The only thing, and I'm not trying to temper your enthusiasm. I don't hate the Mets. You know that. But you have to view one thing as as at least a remote possibility. DeGrom, he ain't pitching for a while. Mm -hmm. We know that. If Scherzer shows age and or gets hurt, and I don't even mean the hamstring, you guys are done. No, I'll tell you why. Because Chris Bassett is one of the most under. No one knows Chris Bassett. He's no, little, who he on, a, he's, on a lesser team, he, he, he would be an ace. He'd be an ace, yeah. number two. And then you have a deeper. Fit. Listen, Taiwan Walker last year had a great first half. This is the longest he ever pitched in the season. That's why the second half was so bad. I feel confident Same that he's going to rebound. Same, Same with McGill. Carlos Carrasco is going to come back, he's going to be healthy. Uh, and and the fact that I know that Mets fans are upset that Dom Smith is getting uh, you know dangled around as a carrot to be traded. <laughs> Listen, I don't we need to. Trade somebody. You need to. It's either J D Davis, Mc, McNeil, McNeil, or, 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 uh, or so Dom. They're being active. They're yes. looking for a starting pitcher. That's, I'm that, cool with that. That's Let's go. That's a good point. That is my. That was my point. Is they, they, they're not Ka done. I, I wish Cashman was shaking the bushes like the Mets are right no, now. No, the Mets want to be relevant, and they well, know. They are. And they know that they can be by by moving around some of these assets. Look, they got some. They got a surplus. We've been talking about it all off season, um, and all spring really. They got a surplus. Hey, so, you, you. They fixed the bullpen. The, the, the Yankees. They got Miguel Castro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, I he hear you. That's than, a Yankees trade. Yeah, that happen every he day. He pitches better to lefties than Rodriguez does, though. I mean, it's look at Tiki <laughs> going <laughs> Splitsville <laughs> over here. Tiki, <laughs> the uh, the baseball savant. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. All right, let's go. White Plains. Frank is on the fan. Tiki and Tierney. What's up, Frankie? Thank you very much for taking my call. And listen, guys, you yes. are the best. You Thank guys, you, Frank. Taking of your fans' calls. You, I know you talk to each other, but no, like I don't want to criticize anybody. But you know. You guys are the best, okay? I'm very proud of you where you have it run your show. Appreciate you, Frank. Now, now I'm a Met fan, and I have a problem with your friend over there. He said not to panic about uh, the ground. <laughs> That's you, Hoff. Get ready, buddy. He's talking to you, Hoff. Come on, Hoff. Listen. Go ahead. Go ahead, here's Frank. Here's a problem, my friend, with the ground. Every pitcher and every player gets hurt. But last year, since July, he hasn't pitched. Every time that something bothers him, and he takes himself almost 
without asking anybody out of the game. It's a big worry about it for him. And I'll tell you why it's a worry. Just like David Wright, he started with those injuries and everything. He never played again just when he quit altogether. He wasn't I'm the same. About this guy. I'm worried about this guy that he will never pitch again as usual. Mm. Now, one other thing was upsetting me about him, that he said, oh, I'm going to hop out out of the contract next year. You know, year after this one, otherwise. Mm. Yeah. I mean, come on now. That's not the way to... Really, I, I don't like the way he approached Well, well Frank, well, I appreciate the call. I, yeah. Certainly appreciate the compliment. And I can't Thanks disagree there, with it. You know, it's the last thing you want to hear right but, now. But, you know, he was asked the question. So, uh, I'm going to get DeGrom's back here. That's and so You want him to be, you know, uh, you want him to lie or uh, well, circumvent the, the question. No, you know what? Because he stated it two weeks ago. True. It was a fair question to follow up on that with the injury. I, and he stuck with his gut. Yeah. And I respect that. Yeah, I but, now, I don't know how much I'd give him. Yeah. If I'm, like, say if he really doesn't pitch much this year, that's a different discussion. But looking at... At, at Degrom as being selfish or not feeling the moment or re- no, I have no problem with him saying that. I, I think he believes. It. I think you could have said that's the last thing on my mind right now, right? Because that's the last thing on Mets fi- Matt, Mets fans' minds right now is man, what's happening to Degrom in, in 2023, right? He could have said that's the last thing on my. I appreciate the question. It's the last thing on my mind right now. I'm just worried. I'm just focused on getting healthy. Okay, well then, if if it's a really good reporter, they they would have said with a follow up. Well, why wasn't it the last thing on your mind when you told us two weeks ago? Because I was healthy. That you intend on opting out. Because because you asked me two weeks ago uh-huh. and I was healthy and okay. I was expecting to have a dominant season. Okay, but then why the confidence, Jacob, that you're still going to opt out if you're not healthy? Because See, I have this a, is how I, you have to ask questions. I, I have a stress reaction to my shoulder and I'm not pitching until mid June. <laughs> I mean. At the end of the day, you're better off just, just I don't know, acknowledging. I had no issue with it. I don't, I didn't either, really, but I can understand why. Mets like, I'll fit. say that vitriol for guys like Randall, who loaf up oh, and down the yeah. court and give us oh, the thank finger. Thank 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 big thank deal. Thankfully, he's done for the rest of thank the year. I, we, don't good. Have, we don't have to watch him anymore. Get lost. And by the way, they go out and play, they play fantastic. Oh, he has 20? I mean, whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if I'm DeGrom, there's there's many ways to handle it. You can just be defiant and say, oh, okay, you know what? I'm going to still opt out. I said I was going to opt out. Or... You could try to be empathetic to the Met fan and say, it's not on my f- mind right now. I'm just worried about getting on the field. Wait, so he's supposed to worry about the Mets fan's emotions when first and foremost, it's actually his if he, emotion if, if he, and his situation? If he pitches 92 or less innings like he's done over the last two uh, seasons, then Met fans are not going to be content with Jacob DeGrom. I don't care how much money he thinks he's going to make or how great he has previously been. 877 337 